Gentlemen, welcome to week nine of the NFL slate. I'm excited. I know you guys are too. A uh, little late tonight. I didn't even get out of the work clothes today. Just popped the collar for you fellas tonight. Uh, I'm telling you, man, long day at the clubhouse BFD. Uh, you know, I haven't seen any of you guys out there lately. Uh, don't know what that's all about, but trust me, we, we, we're doing fine without you. But you guys come in, get a free beer. I don't know what's wrong with you. Uh, a little recap from last week. Uh, gosh. Do I have to give like another headline that oh Joe was so great and you gotta come and get him? Uh five and all last week, Joe. It's really I didn't think that would happen twice this year and he did it to us. Uh all the rest of us sitting in the middle there, three and two and two and three. Nothing too spectacular to talk about there. Um now so let's get into it. Uh we're going to Pistons Corner this week and uh new little segment. I got the mailbag segment this week. Uh, Mike from Royal Oak wants to know why Andre Drummond get maxed out in the offseason? Now, Mike, that's that's an interesting question, and I understand your befuddlement about this, but the reason Andre might get maxed out this offseason, and probably will, is because there's no free agent class this year. He's at the top of the list. He will be the prize to get this offseason going into 2020, 2021. Um, Andre Drummond will be out there, and he's going to put up numbers this year on this team that are – the best of his career. He's going to average 18 points and 18 rebounds a game minimum. He will be an all NBA uh, selection at the end of the year, in my opinion. Um, you know, and it's not all like, in my opinion, it's not something the Pistons should do, but, you know, Andre's going to work at it. He's going to get it done. I mean, just, the guy stays healthy. He's still really young. He's only like 26 years old. Um, so, yeah, he's going to get it done. He's going to get paid. Um, and, you know, I mean, somebody like Charlotte. I mean, I don't think he's going to go to a contender. He'll go to some middling team or, you know, some organization that doesn't know how to do things and he'll get paid. Um, and I hope it's not this. Is. I hope this is just put the whole, you know, nuclear bomb on this thing. And, you know, maybe by the time we're 55 years old, we can actually have a good basketball team in town again. Um, quickly over the week, not a fun week. Pistons uh, State losses to Philadelphia, Toronto, and Chicago, uh, beat Indiana. Um, and they beat the Indiana team that really tried. They had they tried to lose. Uh, they they missed Indiana missed open shot after open shot. I mean the Pistons turned it over more than they did. And the Pacers just couldn't convert on anything. It was really it was quite awkward actually watching that game down the stretch. Just watching the Pacers miss shot after shot after shot. Sabonis missed a couple of wide open threes. Um, they were missing putbacks. They they couldn't make free throws. The Pacers really just gave that game away. Um, the loss to Philly. I mean. It's still early in the year, and beads out. You think you're going to pick up a little cheap win here? Um, you know, Pistons put up a decent effort in the first half. Come out in the second half, and you know, actually build themselves a double-digit lead. And then, I mean, just this team's inability to guard the perimeter is ridiculous. Tobias Harris just goes off in the second half. I think he ends up having like 32 points in the game, but definitely like 20 of them in the second half. And really, just you know, and then it gets down the stretch. And Ben Simmons is doing whatever he wants because we can't guard a point guard for life depends on it. Um, yeah, so you take a loss there, take a loss to Toronto. I mean, it's kind of interesting when you play. I know Kawhi left, but there's still a lot of that championship pedigree um, in Toronto. Um, the Raptors just have so many guys that can play both ways. OG and Nobi, uh, Siakam, who's going to probably be an all NBA, definitely an all star this year. He's taking a big leap this year, in my opinion. Um, in watching these guys, that they have guys who can just play both sides of the ball. And they'll get me to the former MVP, Derek Rose, um, who is instant offense for both teams. He not only comes in and he can dribble penetrate, he can get the basket, he can finish. He has a great mid range game. Three point shot, not so much, but I mean, he can score the basketball, which is something the Pistons sorely need. But whoever he's guarding on the defensive end, they're going to score the basketball immediately as well, or at least break him down and create just tarot, you know, wide open shots, easy layups, things like that. The Pistons almost have to like come up with like the reverse, uh, you know, box and one when Derrick Rose is on the floor when they're playing defense on the other end. Um, take a loss to Chicago. Um, the other night, Derrick Rose returns home, and it was really amazing. You know, I don't think we have a Derrick Rose type athlete that Detroit fans look at because Derrick Rose was literally getting like cheered and chanted like he would go to the free throw line and the Chicago fans were chanting MVP MVP and I just I don't know that we have an athlete that was such a flash in the pan like Derrick Rose was and he had his two three great seasons in Chicago 
uh, won the MVP award, all that kind of stuff, and he's revered there. And I mean, if I don't, I, if I recall correctly, I mean, it was not like a pretty situation when he left. I, I think he left kind of on, I mean, not bad. I don't know if it's bad terms. I don't remember. I mean, maybe you guys can refresh my memory, but I, I don't. I didn't think this was something that like, oh gosh, you know, can't believe that we let this guy go. I think they were happy to see him go, and uh, it was really a bizarre scene in the United Center the other night. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, the Pistons end up uh, in that Chicago game, um, really just losing out in a track meet. Uh, they're able to put up points. Reggie Jackson's out. He's out for the next four weeks. I'm not a huge Reggie Jackson fan, but it's certainly an upgrade over Tim Frazier, who we're starting right now. Other guys to look at on that squad, like I say, always like to give you a little Luke update. I still think he's being very aggressive on the offensive end, which I like. That's the only thing I'm looking at this year. I want to see if Luke Kennard can be a, a legit NBA player, somebody you can start to build around, be one of your young pieces. Um, this Christian Woodfellow they have that's out of UNLV, he's like 26 years old. I mean, the guy plays really hard. He's really awkward around the basket, but he can hit the three at six foot ten. Um, really guy I like to look at there. Uh, and that's all. That's all from Pistons Corner. And let's get to uh, week nine of the NFL slate. What do you say? Uh, as always, I'm going to do the games that I don't pick first, where I lean, and then I'll do the games I do pick last. Uh, we're going to go out to London, England. Jolly old London, where the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars are playing the Houston Texans. Houston laying one and a half points here. Um, division matchup. Um, in this division matchup, the trend I'd look at here is 10 and 4 against the spread. Uh, the underdog is 10 and 4 against the spread in this specific matchup. So that's interesting. You know, that might be a little mean Jacksonville there. Um, you know, Jacksonville plays out in London every season. I guess their owner has some sort of London connections. Um, so, I mean, they volunteer to give up one home game a year, so they play there every year. And I think they're like 4 and 1 out there. Something interesting to look at. And also, one more thing that I would look at is that. It's funny how we've had like a Gardner Minshew mania, and it might be coming to an end here because Jackson goes to a bye next week. Foles could be back the week after that, and they're going to have a decision to make. So, I mean, Minshew might be playing this game fighting for his job. That's why I would actually lean Jackson here. Jackson will here take the point in half. Uh, let's go down to Carolina where they're hosting the Tennessee Titans. Um, really, no, really, the, the Panthers lay three and a half here. No, like, discernible trends that I can find. Um, you know, Carolina just gets smashed in San Francisco last week. You know, I mean, no matter what side of that game you bet, like you either knew you were golden or you knew you were in shit luck immediately in that game. If it was 21 3 before you could even even knew what was going on, it's just the, the red zone chance went, oh, we're going back to San Francisco where the 49ers are going to score another touchdown. Um, it's an interesting spot for Carolina. Uh, Tennessee picked up a win last week, so I don't know. <laughs> I think I guess I lean Carolina here, kind of an up down theory game there, but really no strong opinion about that game. You guys bet that game. Ooh, good on you. Uh, we'll go out to Philadelphia where the Eagles are laying five points against the Chicago Bears. Uh, Philadelphia three and seven in the last ten against the at home. Uh, I found that a little interesting. And this game tends to trend under. <coughs> so, you know, under games, you think you want to take the five points. But in my opinion, I mean, Chicago, Mitch Trubisky, they're just, they're terrible. I mean, that. Uh, Trubisky's bad. I don't think it's ever going to be anything. The Bears have not shown me much this year. I think I've gone on them a couple times, so maybe I got burned. So, I mean, I would lead Philadelphia here, but the trends say otherwise, so I just stay away. Uh, let's go down to Kansas City, where as of uh, tonight's taping, it looks like Pat Mahomes not going to play tomorrow. Um, Minnesota is 3-11 against the spread against winning teams uh, over the last 14. And uh, O.J. Simpson dressed up as Patrick Mahomes uh, for Halloween. Um, Kansas City lane 2 I don't know. I'd lean Kansas City here, but again, it's kind of the same thing as I was thinking last week. I mean, that, that Arrowhead crowd is always significant. And, you know, I mean, you know, I, I think if you took KC there, I'd like it. If you took Minnesota there, I, I wouldn't really understand the logic other than, you know, I know that Dalvin Cook's probably going to eat lunch tomorrow, but I just don't, I don't know. Kansas City going to 5-4, I don't know. I, I, I just kind of feel like they're going to get it right this week, and I'd lean KC there. Go out to Seattle where the Seahawks are hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, this game, um, you know, it's a weird one, you know, in that middle area. Yeah, it's probably where it should be. But Seattle's one and seven against the spread as a favorite over the last eight. I mean, I want to trust Seattle, but I see that trend. I want to trust Seattle, but they gave up 460 yards to Matt Shaw last weekend. Matt Shaw! Matt Shaw! 460 yards. I mean, I know Seattle won the game. They covered for us, but they didn't cover what the actual line was. So I just I have a hard time trusting that. You know, 
I look at the quarterback matchup here, and Russell Wilson has 17 touchdown passes, one interception on the year, and James Winston has 14 touchdown passes and 12 picks on the year. So we would think that Seattle's defense we will maybe put some doubt in James's eyes, but I just don't trust Seattle uh, in this spot, and I don't trust Tampa to just lay down in this spot. I mean, you know, they went out to the Rams, uh, you know, a few weeks ago and you know, put up a 50 burger on them. So just two teams I don't feel like I have a great handle on. I thought that Seattle was going to be somebody I could ride all year. And, you know, I just, I, I'm, I'm not so sure, you know, that last week performance, I thought they were going to Atlanta and just destroy them. Maybe they get right this week. I lean Seattle here. If you take Seattle, I'm with you. Uh, let's go out to Denver, Colorado, where the Broncos host uh, Freddie Kitchens, Baker Mayfield, Nick Chubb, Odell Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry, and uh, Miles Garrett, and the Cleveland Browns. Um, yeah, I say all those names because Cleveland should be so much better than they are. They're just not. Uh, you know, I mean, I guess... I'll make an excuse for myself last week. I mean, I took Cleveland plus 12. I kind of felt going into that game and as it played out that I was kind of on the right side of it. But Nick Chubb, hold on the ball. You can't run 60 yards and then dump it on the ground and expect to beat the Patriots or even be within the game. The coaching decisions within the game, I thought, were a little bit suspect. You know, you had the whole, it's fourth and 11. We don't know what to do. We're down 17 points. So we'll take a false start penalty so we can get back on the field. It's tough. I, and I just, I'm not going to put any money on the Browns the rest of the season. Um, I would lean Denver here just because of the Mile High Stadium and things like that. You know, I mean, Joe Flacco out this week. Is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. I don't think it affects the spread at all. I mean, really, Cleveland, if you just bet, Cleveland, 21 and 43 against the spread. Period. Over the last, I don't know, 64 games. That's insane. Lean Denver there, not going to take them. Let's go down to the game of the week here. Uh, Patriots traveling to Baltimore Ravens. I almost touched this one. I almost took Baltimore just because I don't think New England can cover every single week. I think the spread should be larger if you look at the 8-0 Patriots, the 5-2 Ravens. You know, Tom Brady, veteran, experienced. Vegas just knows something here that we don't know. So I don't take the three from Baltimore. That's where I'd want to go. This game with Trent under as well in this matchup. You know, but what a great game. I'm just going to sit back, relax, and enjoy. And hopefully some of you guys, hopefully all you guys just, like, take the pats and I get a free Ravens game out of it or something like that. That'd be a lot of fun to do that. That would be great. I really appreciate that. You know, it be interesting to see, like, how does Belichick prepare for Lamar Jackson? You know, everybody says that Belichick can always, you know, he wants to make him play left-handed. But <coughs> I don't know. I mean, is, is Lamar just really that special of an athlete? I think we're going to find out this weekend. I'm really excited. That Baltimore crowd's going to go crazy. It'll be a fun game to watch. Uh, I'll, that, at the very, it's a very fun game to watch, even if none of us touch it. Um, let's go out to, uh, yeah, the Meadowlands, where the uh, New York Giants are hosting the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys land seven big points. Oh, my gosh, this is one I wanted to take. I wanted to lay the points. I wanted to take the road favorite here, but I just couldn't stomach it. Um, you know, I just think that you know, Dallas has had a long, they had a bye an extra day, they've been off for like 15 days, you know, they're coming off a big win against Philadelphia in their division, they're in control of their own destiny, I just don't see them losing. Jason Garrett coached them into a four-point win, very well could, and that's why I stay away. Uh, I thought the Giants looked, eh, they looked like the Giants last week against the Lions, they get a backdoor cover, and I very well can see that happen again this week, so I just stay away. If you take the Dallas Cowboys there, I, I don't blame you. That's where I would think. All right, let's get into the picks, boys. Uh, let's go out to Buffalo, New York, where the Buffalo Bills host the Washington Redskins. And they're laying 10 big points, and I happily laid the double digits there. Um, on the news that Dwayne Haskins is starting this week. Yes. And unless Bill Callahan all of a sudden has figured out how to make him go through a progression, unless he's created an offense where he only has to throw – immediately to one guy we're good here lay the 10 take buffalo buffalo two and six against losing teams over the last eight i don't care i saw Dwayne haskins play i know jay green said he wasn't ready to play even though they were zero and five one and six whatever they were and he's a 15th overall pick and he's not ready to play Wayne haskins looks fat on top of all he doesn't look like he's in shape he looks like he's lost on the sidelines i mean i hope Dwayne haskins finds his helmet Figures out how to put that thing on his wristband that has the plays so he can get out there and play against the Bills. I think the Bills will cover this with their defense. Their defense will probably score 14, and the Washington Redskins will probably score three. So I laid the 10 points there happily. Uh, let's go down to Miami, Florida. 
where the Miami Dolphins are hosting the New York Jets. The Jets are ranked three points. This is two bad teams. We both have to admit that. But if I look at both these teams, I still have to say the Jets have more fire, more firepower. And I, I, I think this would be a larger spread if the Jets didn't just totally just get shit canned by the Patriots on Monday Night Football a couple weeks ago. Well, um, you know, <laughs> there's not very many good trends for either of these teams, except for Miami has actually been 3 0 over the last three games against the spread. The Jets have been outscored by an average of 18 points per game on the road this season. But I still go Jets here. I just have more star power. I don't think they've totally like tried to tank the season. I think Adam Gates really thinks he could get fired this year if he doesn't like do something magical down the stretch here. You still have just you have you have football players on that team. And Miami doesn't have very many good football players. So I'm just gonna take the team that has better football players. Uh, let's go out to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where once again, I'm going to go with my Indianapolis Colts, despite the loss of T.Y. Hilton this week. But you look at the other side of the ball, Pittsburgh is missing James Conner. Uh, I think uh, Benny, Benny, Pe uh, Benny Penny Fowler or something like that. I don't know. They only have Jalen Samuels at the running back position this week. Um, and I'm just going to go to the quarterback matchup. And I'm getting frustrated with pundits describing Jacoby Brissett as a game manager. If a game manager means somebody that goes out and wins you games every week and has a touchdown to interception ratio of 14 to 3, then damn it, fine. He's the best game manager in football. And I'll take him. And I'll take Frank Wright every week. I think these guys are well coached. I know they laid a stinker last week. They didn't cover for me. Don't, I'm not going to let it bother me this week. You know, they still got the win. And that's all they got to do this week is figure out how to get the win in a hostile environment. You know, go do it for me, Colts. Uh, let's go out to... <laughs> The Oakland Coliseum, where I'm gonna tip, tip my, I'm just gonna put my toes in the water this week, the water of the Honolulu Blue, and take my two points in the Detroit Lions. Lions 15, five and one over the last 21 games against losing teams. Um, Oakland, I think, is kind of the Mendoza line of the NFL. I think Oakland is gonna beat every team that is mediocre or worse. And they're going to lose every team that is mediocre or better. And I think the Lions are just that. They are mediocre or better. Uh, Matchups I look for in this game. Uh, the Raiders have the 30th ranked pass defense in the league. I think Matt Stafford is going to eat lunch and dinner. I think I, I go Matt Stafford overpassing yards at like 375 this week. Um, you know, they don't have a running game. That's fine. Stafford, shotgun, throw it, do your thing, Matty Stafford. This is a perfect Matt Stafford game to... This will be like a signature win for him. He beat the Raiders on the road. This is perfect for Matt Stafford. I, don't know, I, I wonder if you guys will buy into that as well. Uh, I do worry about uh, Oakland being able to maybe control the clock a little bit against the Lions this week. Uh, Josh Jacobs definitely in the contention for Rookie of the Year this year. Um, and that Lions run defense has been atrocious. So, I mean, that's that's definitely something I'll be looking at in the matchups there. But, yeah, give me some Honolulu blue. Uh, let's go out to whew, Los Angeles, California where the L.A. Chargers are going to be hosting 30,000 cheese hats and the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers. And the Chargers are getting three and a half points. And this seems like an easy game to take. Take the Packers. They're going to blow out the Chargers. I'm going to play a number here, guys. For some reason, 94% of the bets and 88% of the money are all on the Green Bay Packers. And that point spread has not moved that much. Opened at four and a half. We're only down to three and a half. That should be within three by now. You know, it's just, there's just no way. That that number should have gone the other way. It should be Packers by seven now. No, we went the other way. That's ridiculous. Vegas knows something we don't know, and I blindly close my eyes and know that Phillip Rivers, with two minutes left to go, is going to have a game-winning drive and ultimately probably fail and have a missed 47-yard field goal again or something like that. Or a dropped open pass for a touchdown. Or something like that. Or that three and a hook will take me home with the Chargers. Gentlemen, that's all I have tonight. I will see you next week. Peace!